Hello, this is Craig. This video is going to show you uh, all of the details of what is in this June prototype. If you want to discover it on your own, there is a video about how to play that you should watch. Well, you should watch that either way. Uh, but this is going to actually show you all of the details about you know best practices, uh, at least best as I've discovered so far. Obviously, there may be uh, optimizations I haven't thought of. So I just put in the two terminals we're going to need. Once we actually have the terminals, we no longer need the blueprints for them because we only need one set of each. These coprocessors are, go are going to be critical to our work. So we're going to stick a, co a coprocessor in, and I'll show you why. Well, first, notice how coprocessor is only four things, and it's the last one. But once we put a coprocessor in, we have an injector. So what happens is the coprocessor actually gives us more more blueprints out of our out of our uh, uh, terminals. Uh, however, they are also walls, and that means they block air, and we can't move through them. So we're going to need to build a uh, a method of going around like this. Uh, lots of airflow. Got to uh, wait until it equalizes a little bit before we can proceed. Now, the problem with coprocessors is that they're really expensive in terms of power. Each one takes up five power. And so, do they, so does each terminal, but you only need one of each terminal, and we're going to need up. We're going to end up needing five coprocessors. So what we're going to do next is we're going to build the part of our base that is going to be generating lots and lots of power, and in the process is also going to be generating plastic. Uh, the only power that we have available to us at the moment is um, burners. So let's go ahead and grab all this stuff we'll need. Uh, burners create power, but they burn plastic to do to do so, and that means that uh, we're going to need to um, be careful about our our plastic. Uh, since night is coming, night is coming. I'm just going to go ahead and grab a wall real quick, so that we'll be able to see what we're doing. So let's put in a burner, like so, and you can see that our plastic is no longer increasing. Our base plastic production is just as much as a single burner eats. So when we put in a second burner, we're now losing plastic. Uh, each burner only gives us five power, but this is why injectors are absolutely critical. And this is why we had to build at least this uh, uh, coprocessor. That, that one coprocessor, at the very least, is absolutely critical because we need these injectors. Because watch, it goes from 30 and then basically for free, we can increase that power production by putting injectors next to our system. Oh, but look at that. We have a hole in our roof. Uh, and this is actually the issue with building only too high. If you only build too high, you're going to end up uh, needing to punch a hole in your roof, which in general is a annoying thing to have to do. We'll live with it for now. So that's just one side that we've covered with injectors. We're actually going to go ahead and uh, cover both sides with injectors. Like that. And once again, we punched a hole in the top. Normally I would build three high, um, but I don't want to. All right. So while we wait for the air to recover, um, we have to notice that what we're doing here is, aside from me punching holes in the roof, these burners actually consume a lot of air. Um, that's why it's recovering so slowly right now. Uh, we're going to need to deal with that by putting in some vents, but we're going to wait just a little bit longer to do that. All right, so we're losing plastic and we're running pretty close to out, so we're going to just go ahead and stick a vat in. The vat will use up some energy, but it'll produce plenty of plastic. Uh, unfortunately, it makes our air problems, our airflow problems, even worse. So we're going to go ahead and just build out more space because we're going to need another set of burners, like so. Um, so we're going to go ahead and put in another stack of burners like this, uh, and now we are officially uh, running into serious airflow problems. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and put in some vents uh, in desperation. What we actually want is these vents, we want them to be over here, um, because where they are now, they're interfering with our ability to put in injectors, because the injectors need to be right next to whatever they're injecting into, like so. Like 
there we are. So this is what I would call a standard approach, where you've got one thing that creates enough plastic for everything, and then you've got two sets of burners. Um, and each of the burners, all everything is fully enhanced with injectors. And you've got some vents over on the far side to try and keep it under control. Now what this means is that we can go ahead and add in the rest of the coprocessors. Oh, we just locked off our... there we are. Uh, so now that we've got all of our coprocessors, we can see that we've added in a couple of extra things. The color wall and the timer, which I'm not going to show you, but you can play around with. And the, all of this stuff. <laughs> Get rid of this and add in all of this stuff. Because we're going to be going and creating our own room next. But the first thing I want to do before we create our room is I want to get rid of this really ugly top and I want to make it into glass. One of the reasons I want to do this is because glass is actually uh, extremely light and I don't want... this is already very structurally iffy um, because these burners are so damn heavy uh, and I didn't want that to be an issue so I just preemptively made it not an issue. Uh, another thing we can do is build ourselves a room which we're going to go ahead and set off from the main area like this and just make a little two by two area like this. We can't see though. Let's go ahead and make it so we can. Like that, like that. There you go. So this is the space we're going to build our room in um, and we're going to make it out of glass because that way the sun will come in when it comes daytime. We're also going to build a little uh, ledge up here and we're just gonna put some plants on it give us a little taste of home and our own little air supply might as well put a screen in for entertainment um, and we're definitely gonna need a bed so this is sort of like a room uh, but there's no door let's go ahead and add a door just for kicks there we go We've got a door I know I can't twiddle the generic I'm trying to twiddle the door there we go uh, F twiddles the door but sometimes it's a little bit iffy there we go so now this is sort of like a room, and we can even sleep on the bed now if we'd like. And what that'll do is it'll restore our maximum health, because when we take damage, we lose a little bit off of our maximum health as well as our actual health. And I'm not going to make you wait that long. What I am going to do is add a button here, and the reason for that is because it's awfully bright when we're trying to sleep, and we don't want that to be the case. So we'll just go ahead and connect all of the things that are lights to our button. so we can shut them off. Ah, now we can rest in peace. That also happened to shut our door, by the way, because I hooked the door up to it. Here comes the sun. Oh no, it's time to get up, but I'm, I'm, I'm still sleepy. All right, all right, all right. Getting up. Turn on the lights. But uh, despite the fact that this room is functional, it doesn't actually exist as a room in the game's logic. The people who, uh, this character, Orville, doesn't actually understand that this is a room. Uh, in order for him, that to happen, in order for it to be a room beside, instead of sh just shared barracks, we need to put in one of these bureaus. And these bureaus are uh, devices which allow you to assign a room to any given person. Right now there's only one resident, so we'll assign it to Orville, like, like so. And you can see that it automatically detects which bricks are, are in the room. And you can tell for sure that Orville knows it's his room because he takes his pants off. Yes, these cunning visual feedbacks. Um, but now when we turn off the light, this remains on. So we'll go back into programming mode and we'll just hook it up too. Oh, it's going in the opposite direction, so we have to actually highlight it, uh, face it like this, and hit F. There we go. Now all of our lights are on the same cycle, and we can go back to bed. No, there's stuff to do! Actually, we're just about done. Um, that's more or less the whole of what I included, aside from the colored wall and the timer, which you're welcome to experiment with on your own. So as you can see, uh, uh, although there's no longer any wiring requirements, there are still a lot of requirements as to what has to be next to what. So you still get a lot of cool stuff going on, um, and it can be a lot of fun to play with. I encourage you to give a you give it a shot. I don't think you'll be playing it for hours on end, but uh, it's fun to see the uh, you know the core of a game, the beginning of a game, um, in a couple of weeks. Hopefully I'll have added in NPCs and they will be able to go out and 
explore the world, and you'll be able to control them. Um, for now, it looks like it's bedtime, so uh, I'm going to go into my room, close my door, and go to sleep. Thanks for joining me, and uh, hopefully you'll play the prototype and enjoy it.